American life, I mean, I don't think I even ate Chinese food until I was in college. And I was always interested in food. I made bread and yogurt. And, and when I got to Hong Kong, I knew that what made you fat was carbohydrates. I mean, this was, this was the mantra, right? And I looked around, and all these people were eating white rice by the boatload. <laughs> and they were all very lively and very slim, and you know, they looked healthy to me. They had a good sense of humor. They were, you know, I said, so I thought, hmm, whatever they're doing, I want to do it too. And I think they have, you know, that they, they know something more about this puzzle than, than meets the eye. My logic at that time was that, okay, whatever they're doing is working. And what they're doing seems to be based on history as well as must be based on what the, their doctors are telling them to do. Because I think everybody wants to be healthy and they rely on authorities. So I'm observing what all these people are eating. Okay, so first of all, there's, there's white rice and there's always meat. This was not a vegetarian culture. And if you talk to people, they didn't even think that being vegetarian was going to be healthy. I mean, it was very, um, it, yeah, maybe, but it's not. And when you went to vegetarian restaurants, usually there was a lot of mushrooms and a lot of oil. And it was like they were trying to make up for deficiencies in what the, the food was. So, um, so what I, but at the same time, there were always vegetables. There were, even in the fast food restaurants, like fast food, fast food noodle, noodle shops, and you could always get a plate of just plain boiled vegetables with oyster sauce. So it seemed to me that in the local idea of what a healthy diet was, there was a balance of, of meat, of vegetables, and of the white rice. A second thing I observed in, what, in, in their, their local diet was soup was a big part of the daily diet. In, in soup in the sense of a broth. Um, meat boiled up um, with various vegetables and this sort of thing. And this was foreign to me because I, from my experience, soup was Campbell's from a can, right? <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's basically, you had soup and sandwich. And, it was, and the, the idea of a soup was that there was lots of stuff. I mean, you judge the quality of the soup by how much stuff there is in, in how much there is to eat. And, and, and not for the Chinese. The idea was to create a broth which you would drink with your meals. How many people have eaten with a, with a Chinese family or eaten Chinese food? Okay, did you all have soup? Did you serve? Yeah. Now, and it's very interesting because you go to Chinese restaurants, even now, even when you're getting the set lunch, they feel like they need to give you some soup. So there was this idea that soup is part of, the, of, of, a, of a healthy diet. And, and then I noticed, okay, it's not just soup, but their desserts were also soup. The hot, sweet, the hot, sweet desserts, which is like, oh, sweet soup? You gotta be kidding. Red bean soup, green bean, mung bean soup, walnut soup, date soup. I mean, there were restaurants that were just full of, of these these, these soups in it. Okay, so soup is important. Okay, in the, and then not only that, but their medicine is usually a, a, a soup, right? They're, you get the herbs, you, you get your dis prescription, you go to the herb shop, you get your herbs, and you come back and you boil it and you drink it as soup. So the, the, the idea of soup was really fundamental here. And there's a regularity to this. Every, every, it, it seemed to me that people, breakfast or lunch, it could be anything, you know. You could have bread, or you could have toast. You could have pizza. You could have, but everybody had rice with vegetables and meat and soup once a day in the evening. So there was this regularity and this, uh, what do I want to say, a sort of foundation that you know this was a core. And it seemed to me too, everybody had some place to go sick fine, eat rice once during the day. That this was a, an important part. But at the same time, there was a lot of variety. There was seasonal variety. When you went to the markets, um, the vegetables changed. I mean, the, the vegetables that were there in the winter were not there in the summer. And uh, there was a, an emphasis on fresh and seasonal. All right, and then I would eat with my friends, and they would not talk, they would, you know, we, we would sit down, what will we order? They didn't 
we, they weren't thinking about vitamin C or how many omega-3s or they were concerned about heat, hey, uh, hot air, which was the, trans, the translation with this, or some foam, rising wind, or you know, this one couldn't eat something because she was stuffy, hot and wet. And I'm like, where does this come from? <laughs> you know, is this like weather inside the body? You know, you're <laughs> raining inside, or you know, you've got a desert inside your body. Okay, there's three words you need to know that are not part of the English language. Do you know, can you guess what they are? Chi. Chi, right. And? Yin and yang. <laughs> okay, now, everything else, well, that because they'll talk about the liver and the spleen and the heart, and well, they talk about the triple warmer and this and that, but, but basically, you need to understand chi. So chi is vital energy. They'll divide it into your prenatal chi and your postnatal chi and the air chi. But basically, chi is the energy that's, that's activating. Okay, yin and yang is the, rel the relative relativity uh, and you can only define something as yin or yang in relation to something else okay so it's a little bit like if you're going to talk about tall or short or you know uh, short or long you can only say whether some whether a person is tall by by relating them to some somebody else so you've got yin and yang now yang is the concept of bright okay? sun and moon so you have yang is this masculine, active principle, and yin is dark. So you have, active, like in your day, you have active time and then you have sleep time. So the night is relative to the day is more yin. But even within, if you talk about the dark period, there's going to be some parts that are more yin than other parts, and the noon is more yang than, okay. So you have the chi activating your body, and you have this yin and yang. Now, because we're alive, that's compared to death, that's yang, right? So you've got the yang and the yin. Within yang, there's yin, and within yin, there's yang. And this is, means that, that anything that's alive is dynamic, is, is, is always moving back and forth. You're, you're going from yin to yang, and it's that, it's that which keeps you moving, okay, which keeps you alive. So, in uh, yang tends to go to excess. <laughs> okay, so for example, eating is more yang than not eating. So you tend to eat too much. That's the natural thing for yang to do. Yin tends to be deficient. Okay, so it, it tends to, so yang is outward moving, yin is inward moving. So yin, you tend to, to be deficient. So a normal body tends to be more yang and tends to need to boost the yin part of it. Okay, so so you have chi, you have yin and yang, which is these relative principles that's just describing the dynamic relationship between things. And then you have the different organs, and they divide them into six pairs, yin and yang pairs. Okay, so you have the heart and the the heart and the small intestine and the liver and the gallbladder and the kidneys and the urinary bladder. Da, 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 da. Okay, now, the most important thing in treating a patient, in treating any disease, is the diet. The diet and the lifestyle. That the good doctor should be able to adjust your diet and your lifestyle and only as a last resort do they use herbs and acupuncture. Okay, so, if you talk about diet, the important thing then is digestion. And in the Chinese system, it's the stomach and the spleen that control digestion. Okay. Now, can you guess? So these are a pair. Which one is yang and which one is yin? Spleen is yin. Yes, stomach. and the stomach is yang. Okay, so we already know the stomach, so, so there's this dynamic relationship. They have to work together. One author describes the, the process of digestion as like the distillation of, of alcohol. So in your stomach, you have this hot, thick mush, right, that's being churned up with the digestive juices. And the function of the spleen in the Chinese system is to then separate and, and send the good stuff upward and the bad stuff downward. Okay, so the vital essence and the, the nutrition um, rises, gets into your bloodstream, is distributed to the cells, and the waste then is sent down. So the, the, the spleen, in some sense, is the fire under the pot here. 
the, of, the, of, the, of the stomach. The stomach likes liquid, you know, it want, you, you need a certain amount of liquid, but the spleen likes dryness. So already there's this tension. It, you, you get the right amount of water, and then the, di the, the digestive system will work. But too little, too much water overcomes the spleen, and then it can't do its function of separating. So you, 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 then um, the essence is not distributed. You know, more of the, the good stuff is is excreted, and then also because the systems are connected, problems when this when this relationship goes wrong, then you start it passes it on. You know, it's like you've got something something else has to compensate. So the liver or the heart or the kidneys have to then compensate when this digestive process is not working properly. Okay. Now the tendency of the stomach then is, as I said, because it's yang, yang tends to go to excess. So you have a tendency to eat too much. You have a tendency to drink too much. And the yin over here, the, the, the spleen, has a tendency just to be deficient and not even mention that it's having trouble. <laughs> you know, this is, it's, you know, and I, I notice this because, like, the, I, I've noticed recently, okay, when I'm hungry, I pay attention, right? Oh, I gotta eat something. But when I'm thirsty, I think, oh, I'm thirsty, okay, maybe later. <laughs> you know, and I don't immediately, like, drop everything and go get something to drink. And I think that's got to do with the spleen deficiency here. So, this is why, in the Chinese system, then, there's, there's, this dynamic relationship between the species is the key point. Is that you, it's often said you are what you eat, but it's more accurately you are what you digest, you know, or you are how your body processes this digestion.